So the other question is term limits for U.S. Supreme Court justices. Stanford Professor Larry Diamond and other highly respected voices recommend term limit for SCOTUS, which is gaining traction in the U.S. Some suggested the term limit to be at age 75 or three terms of six years, and the fourth term is up to six years. Stanford Professor Larry Diamond in his book, Ill Wins, suggested limiting every SCOTUS's term to 18 years. What do you think? Well, I, I have heard of the one and done, one term and done uh, idea of uh, judicial office. And at the same time, I will say I'm open to it. I think that well vetted and discussed, I don't see it necessarily in and of itself, that idea as a problem. Other states already have a what we call the constitutional senility rule. We sort of joke about it. So you turn 70. If you're a Supreme Court justice, I think in New York, you're out. No thing beyond 70 years of age. And I think that's true in Florida as well. And so I think I am I am neither a proponent or an opponent of it, but I have to think that any solution has to be a realistic one in terms of being accomplished. And I believe that if you start talking about a constitutional amendment, if that's, I believe that may be required for purposes of changing the lifetime appointments of the federal judgeship at the United States Supreme Court level, that would be very difficult just politically to get on uh, on people, on states, to get states to call constitutional amendments to ratify that uh, change. Because if that's the case, if you're looking to, to term limit uh, United States Supreme Court justices, then it raises the question of why don't we term limit circuit court judges and district court judges in the federal system, because they're also unlimited. And then why sh wouldn't we also, if we're, why pick on one branch? Why don't we also term limit Congress? Let's term limit House representatives terms and let's term limit senators as well because the gridlock is primarily in the executive and the congressional branch. The judicial branch has no, they don't have gridlock. In fact, with only nine people, they move pretty fleetly, even if not in, in popular opinion. So if you're going to talk a constitutional amendment for a one and done kind of term, it raises the question of shouldn't we do this for all federal office at that level? And I think that's an important policy question that, that should be looked at. I, I don't think it's wrong in and of itself. It's one of those ideas that should be vetted. Um, and I think you do need the input of the other branches because there are times when presidents kind of get the opportunity to really appoint to vacancies and form the court. It just, and, and that seemed to have happened under Donald Trump. It hasn't happened under a Democratic president, I think. And well, Jimmy Carter comes to mind. He had, I think Carter had certainly number of uh, federal appointments, at least at the uh, circuit court level where he was able to form courts philosophically. But it, it's certainly open to consideration. But if it is, it shouldn't just be reserved for the judiciary. Yes, I have no problem uh, having term limits for all branches, you know, mm -hmm. at different levels. Now, ethic rules for SCOTUSes, in light of the revelation about accepting lavish gifts by U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarice Thomas for decades, do you think Congress needs to make enforceable ethic rules will hold SCOTUSes responsible since no one is above the law? If any of the SCOTUSes violate them, who would enforce the rules and uh, what would be the punishment? Yes, yeah, so I think it's an interesting legal question. It's an interesting constitutional question. It's a really critical ethics question. I think I join the rest of the world and country in thinking that certainly a, a enforceable ethics uh, uh, ethics rules should be in place for the United States Supreme Court uh, justices, as it is for the United States Supreme Court appellate justices and United States Supreme Court trial court justices. 
and that there hasn't been an enforceable uh, rule set is troubling and it would go a long way toward helping ensure public trust and confidence in the justice system, particularly at its highest level, the United States Supreme Court. And in California, for example, we don't have lifetime appointments for Supreme Court justices, but we do have 12 year term as you run every 12 years and you run unopposed. Um, but at the same time, we have a separate independent commission called the Commission on Judicial Performance. And we as Supreme Court justices have rules of ethics, canons and rules that we must abide. If we violate them because someone reports us, you can go before the commission and the commission is empowered to remove the jurist from office. And the commission is made up of mostly civilians, non-lawyers, non-judges, appointed by, and these are public members, appointed by the other two branches of government. So when I was the chief justice, I had two or three appointments to the Commission on Judicial Performance, but the legislature and the executive branch had more appointments than I did. And they appointed civilians who had oversight over judges. And that, that works in California. There is no such body that I know of for the United States Supreme Court, but I think it would go a long way to actually have enforceable rules. Because as you point out, what people remember about the United States Supreme Court is Justice Thomas's big yacht trips and gifts and real estate while he was on the bench hearing cases. And he, he, he states that that did not influence any of his decisions. But remember, conf ethics rules are built on two, two pieces of two, two tenets, that there is a conflict or there is the appearance of conflict. So even if I can tell you that there's no conflict for me hearing my, my good friend's lawsuit, I'm st I should still be recused ethically because even if I could be, there is the appearance that there could be conflict, which gives people doubt in the trust of the law. So whether Congress does it or not, I think is a legal issue. I don't know that Congress has that legal authority to set rules of that nature for uh, the United States Supreme Court lifetime, uh, federally appointed, presidential appointed, Senate confirmed uh, officers of the United States. I haven't looked into that. I'm sure they have. They must think they have it. But that's pretty uh, drastic when another branch reaches out against the other branch's wishes and enforces and sets out rules of enforcement. Uh, when I would, when I was the chief justice, and I heard that the legislature was thinking of regulating the judiciary in some way like this, I would call them up. I'd call up the leaders of the legislature or the governor's office and say, "Wait, wait, wait! No, don't do this. We will craft our own rule, and then if you don't like it, you can try to override it." So I, I don't know about this uh, Congress stepping in, telling the judges what they can and cannot do. And if they do step in and tell the judges what they can and cannot do at that level, then I hope that Congress also lives up to those same rules. Yes. And if not Congress, you expect either the court itself, hopefully the Chief Justice Roberts will take that initiative and come up with something that is enforceable or the people of the United States, they, from all states, they have to come up with a constitutional amendment, which is a monumental. 